Hello and welcome to another edition of the Tigers Down Under. I'm your host as always, Alex, and with me today I have Brad. How are you, Brad? Good, mate. It's been um, it's been a, a good week, I guess, for City. We we were a little bit more uh, downcast last week, Dan and myself, on the episode where, with the uh, the loss to Swindon that we were sort of reflecting on. But um, look, it's been um, quite a quite a positive response, I guess, and it seems sort of the way lately that City seem to they'll have they'll have their loss um, as we did against Fleetwood and, and other sides, but we we tend to bounce back, which is great. So. Um, um, look, we, we, we can start with the league game against Burton on the weekend. Um, what, what were your thoughts on that one in general? It was um, it was a bit of an interesting game in, in a couple of ways. Look, it was. I think it was nice to actually, you know, predict a win, get a clean sheet. And I always think with Burton, you know, they're a team that we should be beating. As I'm probably going to repeat that a lot this year, you'd hope. But, um, but Burton have really had a habit of making it bloody hard for us in the past. Mm. Um, not to mention, I think, oh, I'm pretty sure it was Burton that smashed us uh, a few years ago in a non-so-significant game when we all expected them to, 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 to thrash us. I can't remember what it was, but it was about three or four years ago, I think. But um, probably the good thing was, of course, was I don't think we probably expected us to play necessarily the exact lineup. I know we talked a little bit about lineups. Uh, beforehand, and whilst I think we probably played our strongest, I don't think we sort of felt that uh, we were going to end up playing a team with ten men uh, and probably yeah. walking the ball around a bit. Well, it was it was it was such a strange one because it's so rare that you would get a yellow a second yellow card offence so early in a game. I mean. Look, they were both yellow card offences for sure, but you're, usually refs are a little bit more sympathetic, and they might. They might not issue the first yellow for a little bit and then, you know, kind of give them an, another warning and, and try to sort of t- toe the line um, after the yellow card's been given so that they don't have to send someone off. But, you know, quite rightly, um, I think it was Hughes for, for Burton was sent off. You know, first first offence was a, a completely cynical shoulder charge on, on Wilkes, I think it was. Uh, and then the second one was just pulling him down, which, you know, they're, they're both yellow cards. And, um well officiated and it look like you say i mean it made the game really interesting because i don't think we were really prepared for that to happen and and to play against 10 men is in some ways more challenging yeah look and i mean you can imagine all week they play and train and strategize of how to press and how to look at exposing their their back three or four at times and i think you're right the fact that they go down to 10 men probably subdues thing a bit uh but mm. Probably the only thing that I did like is, and again, I've only probably watched two thirds of the game, but most of it around sort of just how up front we actually genuinely look like we trouble people a lot. Yeah. Um, without necessarily making all the shots that we probably should, but that's another another story. Um, but even in that game, I mean, Wilkes looked like he was probably going to score a hat trick in the first half. Um, yeah. It, if we only took more shots, and I think we only actually took about five, six shots for the half, and yet we probably should have taken double figures at least. Well, even when, I mean, when you consider, like you're saying, Wilkes had his chances, Greaves had a couple of really good headers saved uh, from set pieces, Adelican had, and I guess more in the second half, but Adelican had um, a tap in that he sort of stuffed up. Eves had a really good one on one. So, I mean, it's crazy because when you, I, I saw the stats the other day that we've got the we've we've kept the most clean sheets of any side in in professional football in England. Um, I think equal with Charlton. We're one of only four sides to have scored in every league game this season, um, along with Manchester City, Liverpool, and Newport County. I think it is. Um, we're in tremendous form. We're in some of the best form in that in that sense that we've been in my time of following City. Um, and, and if anything, we're actually underperforming. As you say, the amount of chances that we're missing, it's just remarkable. Yeah, look, it is. And, I mean, even, you know, we've got defenders pressing forward and, and creating chances. It, it, we, we are genuinely probably underperforming. I think you're right because the only thing that worries me, and it's no disrespect to Burton, but when you look at where they are on the ladder, they've got their own goal issues conceding-wise. Um, we should be... Uh, you don't want to sound like a prat, but 
yeah. these are the teams that maybe if we're on song, we win four nil, not two nil. Yeah. And that's your, and that's right. I, th- I think I'd made a similar sort of comment to Logan at the start of the season when we had, um, it was one of the promoted clubs were coming to the KCOM and I sort of said, this is the sort of game we should be winning four, five nil if we're to sort of stamp our dominance as one of the big teams in the division. And you look at under Bruce when we got promoted from the championship, that's exactly what we did. When we had those smaller clubs come to the KCOM or, or necessarily or if we went away to their ground where they'd perhaps be a bit more attacking, we would actually be able to put our foot to the throat and and get a bit of goal difference and get a bit of um, bit of a boost out of the game. And, look, we're not doing that yet in games, but it does seem as if it's a matter of when, not if, that we really click and really start to have a really comprehensive sort of performance where we should be scoring four or five goals. And Wilkes, you know, you think... It's almost as if Wilkes and Lewis Potter have taken turns on on who's having the better patch of form and there'll come a game where they both, you know, bag a couple of goals and, and all of a sudden we're looking tremendous. Yeah, I, I, you're right. And, and I think probably to put some context around all of it, if we're playing against 10 men for 70 minutes plus, 2-0 is, you know, we take 2-0 at the start of the game, but... As, as in the scheme of things, if we want to have that killer cutthroat edge where we're always accumulating points and always becoming pretty formidable against us, then I think it's time to say, right, well, 3 4 there would have been a better result. Yeah, definitely. And so then and on, a, on the topic of the game, then I, I guess I'll give my MVP votes for the game. And, and I, I think it's hard to go past Wilkes for the three. He, he was just looking tremendously dangerous all through the game. His pace was troubling Burden. Drew the fouls for the red card, uh, had, had had a number of really great chances. Um, his goal was really well taken as well. It, it wasn't necessarily, you know, a set piece routine. It was sort of a bit of fortune that it dropped to him from the um, defensive rebound, but still great to be the first to react and to pounce on that goal. Um, so that was good to see. Um, I'll probably give the two to Emmanuel again because I think he's just putting in week after week, great performances for the side. And, and he's, we've sort of I've been, been a bit of chatter on Twitter in the last few days, just about the fact that for a free signing, he's just been absolutely tremendous for us. Um, and I'll give Greaves the one vote, you know, he signed a new three or four year deal, depending on how you look at it um, in the week, celebrated with another fantastic performance for City, got his start back into the side um, and re- really should have been able to cap it off with a goal, but was a bit bit unlucky. Yeah, I, look, I wouldn't disagree with any of those. I actually think Greaves looked pretty threatening, um, especially in the first half. I think he probably, well, I don't know, maybe he probably did too much of the team thing in the second half and just maybe toned it down a little. But in the first half, he looked really imposing, um, especially yeah. he would have had a couple of shots in the first half at least uh, and probably unlucky not to score one or two of them. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, so, so another really encouraging league performance. And um, this morning, uh, we were sort of talking before the podcast. I was a bit uh, unlucky not to be able to get up for the game. Um, work's been a bit crazy recently, but I have seen at least the highlights of the goals from a pretty comprehensive win against Grimsby. And I guess the main takeaway from this I would have is the fact that we made 11 changes to the side and still absolutely dominated. There was no sense that you know, oh, well, you know, it's a bit risky playing him or, you know, are we, are we going to be, you know, um, exposed by playing him or anything like that? It was, you put out the 11 and you you look at it and it's it's a really solid team that if, I think McCann has even said, you know, if we were in a similar position to a Swindon or a Burden and had 10 players wiped out with COVID, he would still be absolutely confident playing a completely different 11 in the league um, and that's certainly how you feel. You look at this 11 and you think, you know, you've got um, Delican starting, Eves up top, uh, Slater in midfield. Um, I think, uh, who was it? It was Jones and um, and McLaughlin at, at down back. So uh, long in goal even, Coyle at right back with the armband. It, it, was a, it was a very solid team and a very comprehensive win. Look, it was, and I think um, it's probably a good sign that, you know, we often said in championship years when we're trying to get promoted to the Premier League and all those sorts of things, and you'd know this, we banged on that many times about having depth and having someone that can cover effectively every position uh, on, on the pitch. Um, and really looking at that lineup, other than, I suppose, maybe 
Batty and um, oh, probably, yeah, look, at the moment, I would say probably Batty's the only one that's a walk-up start in, you know, in our first 11 to 12 mix. Um, but they just obviously seem to gel well enough for a team that hasn't played a lot together. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 probably the deepest the squad has been, uh, obviously at a level below, but deepest the squad's been since that 14-15 season when you think we had um, a squad that was meant to be deep enough to compete in Europa and across four competitions. And we had, you know, you had your Harry Maguires, Alex Bruce, Curtis Davies, Michael Dawson, uh, Paul McShane as sort of, you know, five really quality centre-backs and that sort of depth that we had at the time. Um, this is obviously a rung below that, but this is the deepest. I, 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 you know, feel very confident that no matter what the lineup is on the Saturday, what changes have been made, we're putting out a really competitive side, which is uh, fantastic. And a player that's come from nowhere pretty much, and we're going to talk about a little bit more in a second, is Samuelson has just completely exploded onto the scene, at least in the EFL trophy at the moment, uh, with two tremendous performances um, in his last two games in, in that competition. So uh, really sort of emerging and putting his hand up to, to get a start in the league. Look, definitely, and I, and I was just going to say there, actually, when you talk about lineups, I would think that it's probably what only Samuelson and Batty that played last week that started. The money, but, well, there's probably only three or four of them. Mm. Uh, in that week, that, again, that you mean against both um, games. again? Well, no, so so it was eleven. Well, eleven changes for the starts. But you're right. I think Samuelson came off the bench against Burden, for instance. Oh, and I think okay, right. Well. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, probably maybe you've got to look at it more from the sort of unified approach. In previous years, we've never had a squad that seems to be really together, um, or if it is, it might be you know. A, a, a fraction of the first team or whatever, but these guys genuinely all want to play together. Yeah. And even though we've we've got a sprinkling of different players in there, um, I mean, Samuelson's just come straight in like he owns a joint, really. Um, yeah. And I know it's, yeah. we'll talk about league versus, versus cup, but the, the fact that we've got guys, and we haven't had that for a while, no one's been banging the door down to make McCann have to force changes. It's always been the other way. Um, and that's what we really yeah. need, especially in this league this year. No, definitely in this, and especially uh, this this of all seasons where COVID could rear its head at any point. And and of course, we saw uh, George Long was absent from the uh, the last EFL Trophy game because he was isolating because of COVID. Um, uh, Keen Lewis Potter as well on the weekend. I think his girlfriend has COVID, so he had to isolate. So he missed out on. Um, the league game against Burden and, and then again was absent against Grimsby. In this season where at any time you could lose three or four players in an instant uh, with no warning, uh, it's not something where you can manage fitness. Like, if you know, it's not a hamstring injury or anything like that. It can just happen with no warning. Um, having a deep squad is is absolutely essential. And I think probably the thing that, you know, and I know you'd agree with this as well, Samuelson sort of, he's the right age. He's the sort of guy that, if he can get a run of games together, we know that he's been at some decent clubs, be it, be it some time ago. Um, he, he could be someone that we could actually get promoted and take on as, you know, a future championship, if not Premier League player. He's been at big enough clubs that thought he's a chance. Yeah. So he could really be someone that, you know, as time goes by and older players come and go, he could be our next I'd like to say 10-year player, but I'd take three-year player at the moment. Um, well, but, yeah, yeah, so he's impressive. Yeah, well, I think that's the perfect chance to segue into the discussion about Samuelson, and he, he is our player of the week. Um, tremendous uh, two goals this morning, which were his first two for the club, which seems kind of strange to say when he uh, he looked so assured this morning that you'd sort of be mistaken for thinking that he he's actually um, had a better start to his City career than he has um, I think he signed early in the January window. Um, he was almost a he was almost like a compliment to Bowen rather than Scott, who was a replacement for Bowen. Um, and he he of course sort of came in, um, you know, he came in from West Ham, similar sort of trajectory as Burke had followed a few years before. Um, so we're so I guess we're sort of striking up a bit of a relationship with them. Um, 
it's been a sort of a sort of a mixed start for him. He's had only 14 appearances for us across last season and this season, um, mainly in cup competitions. Um, but I guess you know, first sort of impressions of him were, as you say, there's there's a player in there, and, and clearly higher level clubs have seen that as well. But whether it's the fact that he uh, is he's a very lightweight sort of player, um, perhaps at a higher level, he's he's just not getting the time on the ball to to display his skills as much as he needs to. Um, when you look at him in in the EFL Trophy, when he's playing those lower clubs, he he has that time and space, and and you can see what's there, you can see the potential, and it's just an issue of. Well, maybe he, whether he needs to bulk up a bit, whether it's more about changing the way he plays a little bit to be a bit smarter on the ball, not sure. But um, I think I think if we'd had this conversation a month ago, I would have been a lot more negative on him than I am sitting here now, given the way he's played in the last week. Yeah, and, and I think whilst we, you know, we can talk about the future a lot, looking based on just a few games, the thing I do like about him is. He's technically got it. Mm. And like you said, it might be that his only downfall is he's not a solid lad um, mm. and who, who can command his spot. But then again, I mean, you can go back over time and look at so many players that remind you of that type of you know, skinny yeah. young man that have gone on with it. I mean, even those that would remember who are old enough when, um, what's his name from West Ham? Noble was playing with us. Yeah. He wasn't with us for very long, and most people would have thought, oh, well, if he goes on to captain a Premier League side, I'll go heave. But there was something about him that showed he's actually pretty good. It's just about whether or not he's going to get a run in a team of men and command that spot. I, and I was going to make a comparison to another player from a Claret and Blue side in not comparing uh, talent level, but Jack Grealish as well. When he first burst onto the scene... Uh, and funnily enough, I think debuted against us. You see, the, you see, the clip gets played quite a lot. He was just getting hacked down, knocked off the ball. As soon as he got near the ball, he was just bullied off it, uh, and just didn't get a look in. And it's taken him, I'd say, two or three seasons. You look at, I think there was a passage of play against Arsenal in their last Premier League game where he was he was sort of shouldered in the side, but kept his feet and squared the ball for mm, uh, whoever it was yeah. who scored. And that was sort of the perfect encapsulation. When I saw that and I thought, I didn't make the direct link straight away, but it's sort of what I think with Samuelson where he just needs that extra bulk so that if he's able to keep his feet, if he's able to actually shrug off the challenge, it just lets him open up the play a whole lot more with with, with the skills that he has. Yeah, and it's, not, it's probably a fair comparison because they're basically the same type of mm. playing position, if you like. Mm. Um but, yeah, I think this is where we should be able to say, hey, look, in a midweek game, we brought a kid in that, to try and he really has impressed. And that Definitely. in this league is what we need more of because, let's face it, as time goes by, we might have more players coming down with the virus or exposed to it. All clubs are going to be facing and We know as well there's a lot of games in this season you need depth and we haven't had it before probably since we last got relegated from the Premier League, we haven't had depth in the squad where we can say, yep, we've got two players per position or at least one and a half. Um, whereas now it's starting to look like, especially in the attacking side of it, that's been our yeah. problem. Yeah. Bowen we've, and, got, we've got so much depth in wingers now, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Bowen um, and Grisicki go and we, we fall in a heap. Whereas now you'd yeah. say, well, look, if we did lose an attacking player right now, it wouldn't be as bad or have as an effect as probably what it has in the past. We, we look at against Burden, we were missing Magenis and Lewis Potter. And, you know, yes, Eves wasn't as effective, but you still had Wilkes, you still had Delican, you still had Scott, you know, you've still got all of these options um, in those wide positions, Samuelson as well. Um, so it's fantastic. Yeah, um, definitely. We're sort of, we're talking there about COVID and I should sort of say before we move on to the previews of the games um we do send our best wishes to adam pearson former hull city owner who, who i think is in hospital at the moment with covid um sounds like he's in a stable condition so it's hopefully um not not too serious a, a, a complication for him but um yeah definitely sending him our well wishes yeah for sure um, well, we'll look ahead then to, we've got two pretty big games um, to come this week. We've got MK Don's first up on the weekend, managed by Russell Martin, which I didn't even realise. And, and I, I sort of know of 
Martin from his time at Norwich. Um, I think he played for them a bit in the Premier League, but that's a very sort of strange, um, well, not strange, but unexpected appointment, I guess. I, I didn't even realise that he'd sort of finished up his career at, at, at uh, MK Dons. Um, well, a lot of these sort of sides, when I've been looking up who their manager is, um, story is pretty similar it, that it's either a former player who's sort of been appointed the manager, caretaker basis, and then kind of kept the job, um, or, or else been like an assistant manager promoted. Um, so I guess it's that's the same sort of story here. Um, we, we've actually never lost to MK Dons either. We've played them four times um, and either won or draw, drawn each of them, which is a decent record. Um, and they've only got two wins in their last five games. So all the signs pointing towards another pretty promising city, city display. Well, again, um, I sort of look at it, well, I don't exactly know where they are on the table, but I know they're not in the top six. And I sort yeah, of I think, think, like, we've really got to have that mentality of, are they? Uh, no, well, I think they were bottom for a while. Um, they've sort oh, of picked okay. up a few wins recently. They're sitting in 14th at the moment. Yes, Okay. So really, I mean, we talk about league form. Our league forms, okay, we know where we are on the table, but I think we've still dropped two of our last four, three or four, something like that. Yeah, essentially. In the yeah. league. Yeah. So that's that's obviously what's got to change. Anyone really outside of that top six is is got to be rubber stamped as a win. Um, doesn't really matter how. It's just got to be ticked off. Having said that, I think it was the last league game that nearly everyone in the top six or seven lost except for us uh so yeah. it's a pretty weird round but look let's face it mk dons are not really exciting uh us as opposition that we have to be worried about them which i'm not being arrogant there this is just where we've got to say right good teams just put these teams away yeah yeah and you're right it was it, the, the top six all all dropped points except for us and and charlton won which sort of jumped them up into fourth but um coming from a lot lower down um yeah would you start samuelson against mk dons after after the form you've shown look i suppose the, the manager's got to have a good look at obviously how he's pulled up and um i know it sounds funny because he's only really played the last two but whether that rest side of things is important. The thing that's probably good is that we're having the conversation about it. I, yeah. I think based on what we saw the other night, he's someone that, okay, if he doesn't start, he should be one of those players we bring on for impact for half a game at least uh, because I think he can actually really create some problems um, for teams as the game goes on. And we saw yeah. Bowen... Bowen. I mean, we know Bowen's a bit of a freak, but we saw at times where Bowen probably really showed his worth as a player was he could still do stuff in the last 20 minutes of a game and the first 20. Didn't matter whether the defences were getting tired, he was getting tired, he could still do it. Yeah. Um, whereas Samuelson, without that game time, probably is only going to be able to do it really well for half a game. But I would certainly think that he, if he's not starting, he's probably going to get a good run. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and I think that's what's one of the benefits of having all of these cup competitions and other competitions that we're playing in at the moment is we rotate the team to 11 new players and it suddenly says, hang on, we've actually got 11 players putting their hands up to start in the league. So um, it, it, it it asks McCann the question and it's a great headache to have when, as you say, you know, it's not just, for example, uh, one, you know, it's not Coil pressuring Emmanuel and everyone else was sort of, off the pace or, you know, it's not just Samuelson pressuring, um, uh, you know, Wilkes and um, Delican. It's it's everyone. It's every position on the field is sort of up for grabs and it just makes the first team push even harder to, to keep their place on the side. And it also, you're right, and it, it also could really come down to how well we're scouted, these guys, because yeah. um, I don't know uh, if it was the same when they played Sunderland, but they did, I think they only played three in the back. And okay. they have a really stacked formation in midfield. So if that's going to be the case, we need to be able to say, okay, maybe our lineup doesn't change, but maybe the the way some of those players mentality wise might change, or even who that lineup actually is. Well, yeah, and that's um, a that's a great point. Is that that sides could scout us? They could come along to the EFL Trophy game, or they can come along to the Burton game, and they can watch our players, and they can try and scout and and come up with tactics on how to counter them. But it's 
harder when you're sort of looking at 20, 22 players who could potentially be coming up against you this weekend where you don't actually know, you know, McCann could start Scott and Wilkes or he could start Lewis Potter and um, and Samuelson. And suddenly you've got four different options of wingers that you're having to combat. Um, it makes it much more difficult to to uh, plan for playing us. Yeah, and I think that's it's a good point because especially how he wants them to set up could very well be dictated by who he wants to play. I mean, obviously we know who's who's definitely got to come back in, but I think going back to, I think it was probably the Leeds game, was probably the last time we've looked like we've played a back four. Yep. Um, and that was, what, Christmas time. So, um, sorry, not uh, Christmas time. When we played um, Leeds in the cup, cup and, they, yep. and they hammered us. Yeah, that, that's the only uh, time. I, mean, I can understand West why you, no. West, West Ham in the uh, Cup? When we played, uh, yes, sorry, what am I talking about? West Ham in the Cup. That was the last time I think we played a back four. Since then it's looking, uh, sorry, not a back four. It's the last time we played 4-3-3. Three, three. If that makes sense. Since then it looks like we're playing this slightly different version of 4-3-3 three, three, yes. where our wingers so it's got more, more license and we're, we're tucking back in a bit in front of the back four. So it's almost like a it's almost a 4-5-1, I guess, is what, is what you're saying. A so little bit, like but obviously we've got some pace. Yeah, yeah, we've got some pace up top that really makes a big difference. So I just had a bit of a meltdown there. No, no, um, I, I understand but, what you're saying. Yeah, I think it's, it's good now that we're sitting there saying, okay, our formation looks pretty accurate. We're not probably going to see a I certainly haven't seen any variation in the last few games with the way we've lined up. It's more about, you know, what bodies are in what spots and hopefully against MK Dons, if they're going to keep their formation of playing that back three, I think our formation should really run over them. Definitely. Um, And then just quickly before we go, we've also got a pretty pretty big clash against Ipswich Town midweek, um, currently second against third. don't know what it'll be when we actually play them. Could be first versus second. Um, managed by Paul Lambert, who I, I knew had taken over at Ipswich just before they were relegated from the championship, but I, I'd kind of lost touch with a little bit. Um, they they had a sort of a, a pretty disappointing season last year where they were uh, sort of runaway leaders for a lot of the season and then dropped off considerably and, and ended up finishing 11th. So um, they've, they've stuck with him again. I think he signed a five-year deal with them. Might have been January of this year or maybe last year. Um, so he, they, they're clearly quite happy with him there. Um, they get another team that they haven't beaten us since 2008. So it's another side that we've got a great record against. Um, the last time we played them, uh, we won courtesy of two Grzycki goals, which was, you know, sort of a, a <laughs> nice flashback to consider back when we had, what you were saying before, you know, back when we had Bowen and Grzycki sort of running the show. Um, and they're another side that they only have two wins in their last five against Crew and Gillingham. So, um, uh, you know, um, bit bit shaky so far. They're still managing to pick up draws and points, and then sort of staying in touch with us at the top of the table. But much like the Peterborough game, this is a really good opportunity that if we can win this game, it, it's really sort of starting to create a buffer at the top of the table. Yeah, and talking to one of my mates who is an avid tractor boy, uh, he he was adamant that against Sunderland they were robbed. Um, and right. he said, I watched the game. He said, uh, by Rob, no one really deserved to win. He said the draw would have been fair, but he said that a player sent off. Uh, I think Sunderland scored in the last three minutes or something. Um, so it was a real smash and grab type night. Right. But um, if that's the yardstick, so to speak, I know Sunderland aren't exactly flying, but they're only a couple of points off. It probably shows you that Ipswich could actually be a tougher game than we think. Yep. Um, yeah, probably it, if you look at looking at the two games, you'd say MK Dons three points, Ipswich. I think you realistically say maybe a point would be okay. Mm, mm, mm. Have we we haven't had a draw this season yet? Have, am I? No, um, we I don't think we have. We're no. the, uh, looking at it. No, so no, no. Us, Accrington Stanley, which, whose name I can never seem to get out properly, and uh, Oxford <laughs> are the only three sides without a draw so far this season. Yeah, I just sort of had that thought. Um, look, if, if we take a point from Ipswich, I'm, I'm sort of happy with that. It, it sort of keeps us um, keeps us above them in that sense, um, assuming we Are can we beat away? 
Uh, we are, I believe. Let me just double check yeah. that. Um, but look, I think I think it's gonna be an interesting game. I think Peterborough worried me a little bit more than Ipswich, just because it, Peterborough have those pacey attacking players who um, who could probably worry us a little bit. Um, yeah, we we are away for this one. Okay. Um, but look, I, I think. I think I'd be looking to take six points from these two games. I mean, obviously, I'd say that every week. I, I want maximum points, but you know, I'd be I'd be a little bit disappointed if we couldn't couldn't get the win. I, I think I think given our mixed form recently, I do want to sort of see a bit more consistency from City and and just to sort of go on a bit of a winning run. But um, you know, as we say, every game is tough in this division. Um, if we can just keep keep chugging along, keep up that pace of being in the top two. Um, we're pretty much on track for a 100-point season at this pace. We're a quarter of the way through the season, which is pretty remarkable to say. Um, so, you know, everything's going right so far. We just have to keep it going. And, look, I think probably the big one for me as well is the fact that I don't think we've conceded a goal for four games, three games, four games. I know that's cup and football league trophy and all that included yep. but you know what it's like there's a bit of a mentality there that hey we're going to be really hard to score against mk dons themselves aren't necessarily scoring multiple goals again ipswich i think if i remember ipswich's goal records the same as ours yeah yeah just well, about the other day yeah just about so um it could be one of those ones where yeah if we can get the four points I'd, I'd love six i think modestly this time of the year few back-to-back games we can get four points out of these six that's better than most absolutely well thank you for joining me for this episode brad thanks for having me no problem and and here's to a couple of wins over these games and uh to be back here again chatting about city continuing up the table but until next time come on city